All right, impression extension here. Today is a quick um, interview I did with my buddy Zeev. Right now, I'm in the process of a huge, or not a huge, but a little dump of all my interviews and some shows that I did in 2019 that I'm trying to catch up for. So some of these dates and references to other shows are all over the map. This one was taped um, in October, I believe, mid-October. So enjoy it. Again, there's going to be a lot coming out in the next uh, couple of weeks. No rhyme, no reason. And then 2020, we're going to pick things up weekly, maybe even bi-weekly, because now I've got a lot of interviews lined up and a lot of ideas that are going through my head. And I can't wait to share all of those with everybody. So thanks again to Trent Radio. Thanks again to everybody that's been a part of this. And happy holidays. Here's, I guess, the first 2019 interview dump. Here we go. Zeev, my buddy Zeev, Acro Yoga. Let me sit a little bit further. Hey, hey. There we go. Right. <laughs> yeah, a little bit closer. Okay. All right. We're here. Impression Extension. Austrian edition. I'm with Zeev from Israel. Zeev was on my first show I aired here, a quick little interview. I know him a little bit more. Thank you for coming on the show. Sure, anytime. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, just to give the audience a little bit of color, Zeev here has introduced me to Acro Yoga. <laughs> now, we're getting right into this. Um, I love it. For those of you that don't know what acro yoga is, Zeev is going to explain it. Okay. It's funny because just today I, I had to describe what I do for my CV. So I thought about how to describe acro yoga in one sentence. So I think that would be um, having two people creating, um, easily creating acrobatic tricks by trusting each other and overcoming fear. That what would I say? Okay, so two things there that you talked about that you mentioned that are, seem important: fear and trusting each other. Right. So, talk to me about fear. What kind of fear are you talking about? Well, um, for example, sitting on someone's feet without touching the ground might be scary for most people for the first time. Um, it's just you're out of control. You can don't really know what's going on and you might fall, I mean, or you imagine yourself falling, and you still do it. So that would be... So pushing like a boundary of like a physical, pushing a physical fear of boundary. getting hurt. Well, that's one thing. There are more fears involved. Some of them are emotional. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. For example, uh, people that are heavy might be afraid having other people lifting them, so so he feels the weight, or or... They are afraid of the situation that it might be too heavy for them and from the embarrassment. Um, Ooh, I didn't think of that. That's not what I was going to go. Yeah, that's, yeah, interesting. I never thought about that, that someone might be afraid because yeah, they might, it might not work because of their size, I guess. That's an issue of people who do aqua. It happens a lot. But um, usually when you start doing it, you see that it's not that bad. And no. with the right instruction, it's usually easier than you expect. Yeah, so I've just started, and I'm a base, so I'm the person that's on the ground with my legs sticking up, and people that are flyers are on top of me. Is that the right word? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So people are on top, and they're doing moves or whatever, or balancing. There's a lot of balancing. Right. And um, I noticed the weight difference as well. That said, I was had somebody who was experienced that seemed to weigh the same as some of the other people, and that person, it was a lot easier. It forming. makes sense. Like makes a lot sense. of, I guess, body control or body positioning or... Uh, yeah, technique is very important. If you have a right technique, you make it easier for the other person. Um, as much as you train, you get experience and just learn how to make it in an effortless way. Okay. So the idea is to be able to lift each other without having to work so hard. We want to make it easy and fun so we can laugh and communicate while doing it. Right, because that's that's part of it. Like some, I think you keep telling me, or breathe. Yeah, like breathe. Yeah, breathe. breathing helps. And talking is also breathing. So right. I can see when talking might help as well. Right. Now you said about trust. Right. Talk to me about trust. There's the obvious, like I trust you're not going to drop me, or I trust you when you fall, you're not going to step on my face. Right. 
But is there more trust you think that goes deeper than that? Um, well, it goes deeper than that. I think, as I said, by lifting someone, you take the control and you put him in a situation when he's not sure what's going on. Um, so you have to trust, the flyer has to trust the base that if there is an exercise that he doesn't know how to do, he will, he will know when to stop or will know when to ask help from another person and not just try to do it and accidentally make you fall in a bad way that's going to hurt you. Right, because I'm sure people get hurt. You have to, people, people have to get, get hurt. hurt. I mean, not that much. I think less than you expect. I think it's less dangerous than any other sports I know. For example, basketball, um, um, soccer and football. I think they get hurt much more. Yeah. But um, every time you, you do something with your body, there's a risk of getting hurt. Another thing that I think about when I think of trust is the people you're working with. Yeah. So a lot of times it's a guy and a girl right. and they might not be partners or a guy and a guy or a girl and a girl, whatever combo you want. And there has to be some level of trust there even between, um, well, for example, Sharon, I put her up. Um, she's got to trust that, you know, that I'm not going to do anything inappropriate. You've got to trust that I'm not going to do that. And it seems like that community has that already built in where an outsider might look at it and go, wow, Lord, they're really close. Mm -hmm. That must be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. For me, <clears throat> it's not even in my radar. Like, I'm not even thinking that. When I've, like, I'm thinking about making sure you don't fall. Yeah. <laughs> like, you really don't, when you're in it, you don't have time to think, wow, like, my feet are, like, right on her butt. Right. Like, <laughs> right on her butt. Right. Or they're moving around and someone fell a weird way. Like, <clears throat> but I can definitely see how some people might have a trust issue with that, especially if they're strangers. Absolutely. You're right. That's a very good point. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> I just agree everything you said. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. Like, and especially, like, you know, I'm not insecure, especially now with relationships. If someone likes me and they're into me, great. And if as long as I feel that, I don't worry about what they're doing. Because that's just gonna, that's just a negative. That's just gonna bring everything down, if, mm. right? But I could see, and now especially, well, I guess it could go with guys and girls. But I could really see boyfriends of girls that are flyers not like it. It happens. You ever get in a fight, or anybody ever like mm. make you feel uncomfortable because you were working with their girl? Uh, never happened to me. I try to approach Akko in a way that's very, uh, let's say I try to put my ego outside of it and not make such a big deal about if somebody's walking with my girlfriend or touching in intimate places. I just try not to involve it. But I, I can think of other people who had this issue. Yeah, when um, I was in high school, I had, was in like a school play, <clears throat> like, you know, a drama play. And one of the girls, she had to kiss me. It was just like a, a kiss on the cheek. And we were young. We were like 16 and she was like 17 or 18. And her boyfriend would be staring at me hard mm. whenever we're rehearsing or even when we're not. He was giving me attitude because in this drama play, she had to give me a kiss. Mm. And we're hanging it and we're having fun, right? You know, like we're, in drama, we're doing a play. So we're like laughing and dancing. We're having a great time. Now, it wasn't until my older brother stepped in and his buddies that straightened him out or else it would have been a nightmare for me. And I would have kept having to deal with this for something that really was nothing. So I could see that a little bit in the acro. But what else I see is that there's a lot of couples that are working together. Right. Do you find these couples come to acro and find each other there or come together and start acro? Both. Both happen a lot. I met my partner by doing Akro. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, yeah. No. That's where we met. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. So yeah, we're going to get into... She hit on me. <laughs> she hit on you. Yeah. Well, look at you, right? Of course she hit on you. And you're a Acro Yoga machine, too. So you're good looking, you're smart, and you have a wicked smile, and you can Acro Yoga like a madman. So sure, why not? Now, back to... I was going to get to where you grew up. Right. A little bit, because you're straight from Israel, correct? Right. Your whole life? Like right from the beginning, you've lived there the whole time? Or I've lived in there? Israel the whole time, for the last 30 years. 30 and years. Just you now were in the I military there for the too? first time. I was in the military, yeah. The whole deal, because like, Sharon was in the military. Right. I did, I, 
in Canada, you know, we hear about countries and a little bit. I didn't realize the magnitude of the military and how it is over there in Israel and how everybody has to do it. And then these little vacations after once you get out and things like that. But as far as I remember, you were living in like a smaller village yes. in Israel. Yes. Talk to me about that. Um, or describe what that was like, because I don't think people in Canada understand or really not. The majority of people don't know what you, what it would have been like to live like that. Well, it was like half an hour away from Tel Aviv, which is the bigger city around. Um, um, I, I can say it's like a suburb of Tel Aviv. It's not really a village. There's nothing too interesting about it. I mean, it's a small place, but it's very close to bigger places. Was this one of those socialist cities, though? Did you live in one of those? Well, I used to live in one of those, but it's it's not where I grew up. Okay, um, no, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm more interested in that socialist. So that would be a kibbutz. Kibbutz? Kibbutz. And how old were you then? That's an interesting thing to talk about, actually. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Um, so after the army, I was... 25. I just got back from a big trip around the world, especially in the United States and Canada, actually. Um, and I had this feeling when I want to settle down someplace and work in agriculture and having like some kind of a community. So I found this place in the desert. Um, it's all the way down south, um, like really in the desert where like there's we're talking nothing around. Desert, desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's okay. complete. Uh, it's beautiful though. The nature is astonished. Is, is amazing um, and it's a really cool place so everybody's working and all the salaries they go to only one bank account and if you need money you can just come and take as much as you want and you eat in the same there's one big dining room and everyone eats together and the cars are shared and everyone can use them that's like that's pretty unique so how many people are living so just to color it a little bit this is like a socialist city in the middle of the desert where everybody does their own job and then all the wealth that's created goes into a pot and everybody shares that pot. Exactly. So who or how do you, uh, first of all, how many people are in this place? So there's 300 people. I would say 200 are, they always live there and the other 100 are changing. Like, right. I came in there for out. a short time. People just come in and out. Um, yeah, so you can either work in the kibbutz. So they have a huge date plantation. You can, we can always, everybody can work. There's always work to do. Okay. Or so you can work like outside a, and be a teacher or a lawyer or whatever. And then, oh, so you can work in another community. You can work in another community or in the city or you can do anything you want. And then um, you come back and live there at night. Yes, exactly. And all the money you make all outside money you make, of that. You, outside goes to one. Uh, so what one happens thing. if somebody comes to that community with money already? Well... Specifically in this one, uh, you can just keep your money in a separate bank account. You can still have it. I know in other places, the old-fashioned kibbutz, you couldn't have a bank account. You have to have all your property belongs to the community. All your property belongs to the community. Sorry about that. So if someone comes in there, or would somebody even go in there that has a lot of money? That would be the first question I would ask. Again, what's the question? If someone has a lot of money and wealth and property or whatever, would they go and live there in a cahoots? I think many people would. It's just a great place to live. But even if they had to give it all up? Hmm. Can I ask them? I don't know. <laughs> no, I just didn't know if you may have seen some people that it came in there that were maybe more successful in creating wealth and then they came to live there and were gave it all away and what how did, well, did that really again in, the, in this specific kibbutz you, you didn't have to give it all away. So I know about people who lived there and just had their their out their businesses outside their businesses. they would have their bank account or their investments or whatever so they didn't have to give it to to the community okay was so, there any other um lifestyle things that were are different um like uh, polygamy is that part of it mm, in this specific one not really eh, there might be one or two but Just it like wasn't anywhere. yeah yeah um any specific lifestyle well this specific place just allows freedom uh, everyone can do what he wants and there's no bosses there's no uh, there no one is in charge there's no police i mean police can come there's the israeli police but they don't come that often um and there's just lots of parties and events and um, cultural activities and just many so would you suggest that for somebody to live 
even just as an experience for their life? Like, in, like to leave, live there for a year or six months? I would... Um, I would uh, I would tell anyone to go there for a little bit. Yeah, people are always welcome. You can come and volunteer for as much as you want. You don't get paid, but you get all of your needs fulfilled. Right, you live. You get, yeah, you just live there. You don't need to think about money, and it's just so different than everything else you can find in any other place. And do you have to be uh, an Israeli to do that, or no, can a so Russian can come into Israel? Come. And there's many people from different countries, and English is very accepted everyone speaks english so yeah i've noticed even here the english with everybody's getting better and it yeah. seems like the english you know i know german's huge massive over here but when you go global yeah english seems to be the key you go global you gotta speak english yeah it, it's it helps so much yeah i wish i was better at it a little bit um when it comes to writing and stuff because i'm not a good writer like it takes a, yeah it takes me a long time punctuation i don't even know what a noun is still really? if someone were to say like what's an, a noun i know what a synonym is but like i just write when i write and mm -hmm. then i fix it and then that's it oh, yeah. i'm more of a talker uh -huh. and voice to tape or voice like so i audio journal uh -huh. and i don't write journal now because i can't keep up um writing with my brain my brain just is like, just too much going on. I just need to speak it out. So we're going to get back to this acro yoga because you're teaching me a little bit. Well, I'm learning everything from you pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, but how did you get started? Like, you're good. I watched you with um, somebody the other day and you had that person up on your legs for a long time. Yeah. Effortlessly. Yeah. and it was beautiful like she was doing some spin moves and stuff and she was right. kind of like an amateur and I was like wow like you're really in control there you're dictating the flow how did that happen how did you get into it so um, seven years ago I was traveling in San Francisco saw some people doing it in the park um, first thought came to my mind that seems cool but I can never do that but I was like yeah whatever let's go and talk to them let's try and I came there and they let me try and I just saw that I can. Since then it became my number one hobby and I've been just doing it as much as I can. Um, and I enjoy it, like I don't, I don't need to push myself to it because I really like it. You know? Right. And uh, I think my... Um, the thing I, I like the most is to bring new people in. So th that's the thing I'm good at, like taking someone who's never done it before and go through this process of overcoming this fear and helping him, helping him to trust me. Yep. And then I can do really crazy exercises with him. Yeah, that's good. Well, I trust you already. Like, we've done it a couple of times. I, I, I think as a beginner, maybe I'm okay for my first couple of times and I've maybe got some potential. So I'm excited about that. But I still have no idea really what's going on. It's like show me what to do and that I try it, it'll be nice when I know how to do things and I can show other people. Oh, you're getting I'm excited there. about that. You're getting there. Yeah, yeah I, think, like, I think it's really cool, especially watching all these people and the kind of moves that they're doing. I'm in awe. And, you know, and I get it that it's so much practice and yeah. all of those things, but sometimes I want to be a little bit better. <laughs> I get down on myself. That's what I feel. I feel like I let the other person down. And Why? maybe, I don't know, because there was one girl I had up the other day and it wasn't working out. We just weren't hitting it. And I could see the frustration in her. Now, I'm sure that was self, frustration to the self. But I was feeling frustrated on myself and I'm like, I'm letting her down. Like, because I'm not good enough and I'm doing it wrong. And I think I got to let that go. Um... I also think you gotta let it go. Um, I think that's um, it happens to everyone all the time. Like this feeling that you talk about, it's very uh, it's natural. It happens. Best way would be to talk about it. Like yeah, but say, well, <laughs> they're uh, in German. That was the uh, other problem. Her English was tough. It was even hard to figure so out. Like communication. Foot to foot. Communication is important. Communication is huge, but I don't is a big talk part of German. It's, well. You overcome that with talent because you just go, yeah, yeah, just flip over and I'll throw you up. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you do it a lot, you find other ways to communicate. You find things that are universal. For example, if I do it with you, sometimes I just walk with your body. 
Yeah. And the mind doesn't understand what's going on, but I just point you, put your leg here, your hand here, and just feel it. So this is also communication, but of a different kind. In the beginning, it's better to have clear words, of like a like clear, uh, you know, just communicating by words mm-hmm. and understanding. Um, and I'm sure you can find many English speakers to do it with. Well, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to recruit people. I've yeah. like, I talked to you about recruiting Tonight, people from my yoga English. class. Yeah. And yeah, that's the key. I want to find some people that I can work with on a little bit more consistent basis. Uh-huh. That I have a flyer for you, by the way. Do you? Perfect. Yeah. She just called. She might be coming. Tonight? Okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> because that's. The, I think that's really important. Yeah, she just told me she's looking for a base. She's looking for someone to... Am I strong to enough, though? We'll have to see. Oh, I'm going to have to stretch now. It'll be okay. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't even stretch today. But... Um, that's 20 minutes. We're going to wrap this up. All right. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. I mentioned to you before that we are going to have a little bit m- deeper conversation, maybe in the new year, like December, January, after we do more of this. And I hope that you're cool with that. Sure. You're good? Yeah, I love it. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that was Zeev. Uh, he's awesome. Him and I um, are, are just back to this dump me and z are going to be alone for christmas for three weeks so hopefully we're going to get some acro jamming going on but um you know he's a great guy he's been here for a while and i'm really glad that i was able to meet him and sharon but uh you know thanks for listening we're going to be trying to or i'm going to be trying to put in as many of these shows as possible over all the ones that i have saved up so tune in tune out tune on turn up explode